pruning took place um, and various different aspects of it. Some people moved away for positive reasons. Some people took their toys and left. Uh, mm. Other people got, got upset with us and left. Um, it was, I mean, those of you that were here at the time, uh, I know Joyce and Dale were here and Elaine uh, Cambrick was here. Um, and of course, Kathy and I were here, but uh, there were various different reasons why people left, but it was God's pruning. And I don't claim to understand every detail of it. I just know that it, it's true. He said it and he brought it about. And uh, Ron, what were you going to say? I just wanted to point out, we haven't been recording. Oh, I we have started not. the recording, oh, nuts. which oh, is God. a bummer. So yeah. for anybody that's watching this later, I apologize. We didn't hit. St we didn't hit record, so that's why it's truncated. So you, so you missed a great discussion about prophecy, the definition of prophecy, and it being foretelling. But it's it 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 can be telling the future. Celine, what were you going to add? Um, just quickly, I don't because I I want to hear where you're going. But on the pruning, I'm thinking of like an apple tree when you prune off the dead branches. That's right you allow that or the dying branches right or the dying leaves or the dying you you allow the nutrients to go then you get rid of what's draining that and the nutrients go then to to the apple and make the apple bigger mm -hmm. something you said alluded to that that yeah you that it was about elaine said growth mm -hmm. it wasn't mm -hmm. about multiplication it was growing what you had right. to a deeper level right right and we we need to be and i i appreciate what you're saying and i agree with that one of the things we need to be careful about is taking that analogy to um um how, how do i say this too literal and indicating that everybody that was pruned off was a dead branch or a dying branch, because that wasn't necessarily the case. And right. I know that's not what you're saying, Celine. And I just yeah, want to make sure that, that we're clear, because some people just moved on, uh, you know, for different purposes and went in different, different and continued and went elsewhere and flourished. Uh, so, you know, I'm glad you clarified that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, in this context, you know. It wasn't that everybody that left the church died and left and walked away from Jesus. No, that's not the case at all. Uh, a number of them went on ministry elsewhere, actually. So, so that's that was uh, that's an example of foretelling or the future. Joyce, that's what I wanted to ask. If um, prophecy could also be, or would that be word of knowledge or discernment? My, my example is like when, um, who was it? I was it um, Isaiah came to King David after the Bathsheba thing and said, what's that bleed or what, what, who, you know, gave the example of, you know, the, the lamb and you took the only who they, the man had and all that. Was that prophecy? Because that had already happened. So it wasn't foretelling, but he knew something that nobody else knew because it happened in private. Or is that discernment or word of knowledge? It, it, when we look at, and you, you're mentioning the different gifts in the book of 1 Corinthians, word of knowledge, uh, discernment, uh, word of wisdom, uh, the, I think we need to be careful about being excessively rigid in our delineation of word of knowledge versus prophecy. All of it is God speaking. Mm -hmm. It's, it's just different facets, different aspects of the same thing. Uh, word of knowledge is uh, knowledge about something you have no natural understanding about, uh, but that can be prophetic as well. It's the same kind of a God speaking to us. Ron, what were you going to say? Prophecy makes me nervous. Why? Because I, you know me, I'm a very technical, very detailed kind of guy. And how do I know where that's really coming from? Mm. And that's you know a legitimate I mean? question. 
and it it does. It it just I don't know. It just it it makes me nervous. So let me ask you this. I'll ask the room this. How can we determine the source of prophecy? What's one measure that we can use to determine the source of prophecy? Kathy. <laughs> It would have to line up with the word of God. Does it line up with scripture? Yeah. If it's contrary to scripture, it's not God. Right. Okay. Um, You prophecy, there's there's a a passage that says, excuse me, that the, the spirits of the prophets are subject to prophets. So we don't just take a prophecy at face value, we discern. And we, we weigh it. And so there's good reason to be cautious mm-hmm. about taking prophetic word. Um, and just because um, somebody, if, if you look in the Old Testament, a prophet that prophesied falsely could have been stoned to death. Right. And they were to be ignored. So, yeah, we have to discern, Ron. So uh, I, I understand your measure of discomfort with it. But the other side of it is it could be a wonderful occasion where God speaks to us in supernatural ways, as we talked about just a second ago about the foretelling of the future. And Joyce, to to go kind of in the direction you're going, another aspect of prophecy is it may be um, revealing of his will and direction in a matter. Okay. Um, And what was the illust- oh you were talking about when when the prophet came to david and he exposed him for his failure um i w- w- we can get there in a minute sorry i hit the wrong thing um it the, the example that i brought from scripture is where uh david was identified as god's choice for king in 1 samuel 16:12 right if you go to 1 samuel 16 you'll see that the prophet was sent to David's father's house. Mm-hmm. And he was told that the king is from that house. Mm-hmm. So the prophet looked at the eldest son because the eldest son was the was seen as the the logical choice. And but the spirit of God said, no, that's not the right one. And he went through all of David's father's sons until he came to the end and he said, is there somebody else? Well, there's, yeah, there's the, there's little baby. He's out with the sheep and he brought him in and God said, he's the one. So prophecy can also be revealing of what God's will is in a matter and God's choice in a matter. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. Does that follow? Mm-hmm. And that's not necessarily future. It's declaring right now. What is God's will in a matter? Um, his choice. Back to the same word we mentioned just a minute ago at McKee's Rocks. And this isn't the only time we've had a prophetic word, but this one was pr- particularly um, profound in the life of the church. Um, that same word, uh, the board and I had just met before the service. And we were trying to make a decision in a particular matter. And during our meeting before the service, one of the deacons said, Pastor, I think we need to go into the service and we need to hear from the Lord. And I agreed and we agreed as a board and uh, we went down into the service. And during the time of worship, this, this message came up that said, a time of pruning has come. And the, the person that prophesied had no idea what was going on. But what that Ooh. word told the board and I was that the decision that we needed to make was clear and mm-hmm. that we needed to take action of a particular nature. And I'm being vague on purpose because I'm not looking to. Uh, but the point is that God's direction, not only did God give a future declaration about what was going to happen, but he also gave the board in that same prophetic declaration. He gave the board clarity as to what decision should be made that he would have us to make. So do you, can you see 
how both aspects of that come together there? Does that make sense for everybody? Mm -hmm. Am I clear enough without being? Um, yeah, you are clear enough. Am yeah, I clear enough? I, okay. Yeah. Repeat that very last sentence if you can, so if you wouldn't mind. So he made it clear. He made it clear to the board and I what direction we were to take, what action we were to take. <laughs> And so in that single prophetic word, he declared not only what the future was going to hold, but what we should do right now. How to get there. He gave you, yeah, I got it. No, it wasn't how we were going to get there. It was a specific action that we should take right then that really had nothing to do with the pruning. Mm. Not directly. I mean, there was some pruning that came as a result of that, but it wasn't because of what it, it gave us clear direction. So there were two aspects of that prophecy. In, in the one prophetic word. When he gave you clear direction, mm -hmm. did you know, did you know why he was telling, see when he tells me to do something, I just do it. I don't question why am I doing this? Well, there, there's did a lot of backstory know? to this, Celine. Uh, okay. There was, there were, not, yeah. We, yeah, we were, we were trying to come to a decision and it was a very difficult decision. And we knew why we thought that decision needed to go a particular direction. But we we were weighing it. And God gave. So we understood the background of it. Right. The board and I did. And this just helped us. This just made it clear what the decision should it, be. What to do. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, personally, I can share a, a personal experience. Um, when I was, and many of you have already heard this, but. I got saved in 1980. Uh, I got saved in July. I met Kathy in August, proposed in September. In December, we got married. In the following spring, God called me into the ministry. Uh, actually, I think it was winter, wasn't it, hon? I think it was like January, February. Who knows? It's 40 years ago now. But <laughs> at any rate, God called me into the ministry. And I was, my pastor had indicated that I needed to go and get training. And I had no inclination to go to college. I was a roofer. I was perfectly happy working with my hands for a living. But God was calling me into ministry. And so my pastor had given me three options for training. And he had instructed me to go and pray. And so I was making it a matter of concerted prayer on a regular basis. And one morning when I was in our basement, um, we had a couch down there and I was praying in the morning and I was asking the Lord for clear direction. And I literally heard a voice, an audible voice. It's the only time it's ever happened. And God said, get up and go to Florida. Now it was so unsettling to me that I got up, looked behind the furnace. I thought somebody was in a room with me. Um, but it was a, it was a prophetic word from God as to what direction we should take. And the interesting thing was, I got back down and I prayed and I said, Lord, you confirm your word. You, you, you say in your word that you confirm your word. And I was working as a roofer at the time. And um, the, the guy that I worked with and I went around and did little jobs all day long. It wasn't like we went and like Joyce is, they're going to come and they're going to tear her whole roof off and put a whole new roof on to her house. Well, what we did is we would go clean gutters or replace a couple of missing slate or make a minor repair, replace a downspot, something like that. So we were doing little piddly jobs all day running all over the neighborhood. So we spent a fair amount of time in the truck going from job to job. And one day as we were driving around, I was just, it just struck me how many Florida license plates I was seeing. And I thought, nah, I'm making it up. It's all in my head. I'm just seeing what I think I need to see here. And God's not really confirming. Well, of course, the enemy wants to come along and challenge that. My unsaved coworker that I used to party with before I got saved, out of the blue, I didn't say a word. Out of the blue, he just said to me, have you ever seen so many Florida license plates in all of your life? Mm -hmm. And no, that was a confirmation to me mm -hmm. about God's direction. So prophecy can be foretelling of the future. It can also be a revealing of God's direction 
in a matter. And that can be an aspect of prophecy. Mm. Anybody else have any examples that you could share or that you'd like to share, Jamie? Yeah. When I was um, contemplating opening up my own business, I had a tough decision to make about leaving my job um, as a I was a director. I was making a very good salary. And, um, you know, I kept praying on it and praying on it because um, the job was making me miserable, too. But I didn't want to set my family back by starting this new venture that was very uncertain as to what would be rolling in the house and the way to, you know, take care of our bills or stuff. But I just kept praying on it and praying on it. So as Ron and I would go to different stores and do shopping, I started seeing choose happy everywhere. Choose happy, choose happy, choose happy. So I gave myself like a date by which I had to make my decision. And I was in my craft room doing some crafting because I just couldn't think about it anymore. And when I looked on the floor, there's this wee, wee little slip of paper. I'm like, what the heck is that? And I picked up the piece of paper and on the piece of paper were the words, choose happy. (laughs) And I called Ron and I told him about it. I'm like, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave. Like all, everything, it, it, it's not coincidence, it's God smacking me in the face with the choose happy because I'm very much a sign person. Mm-hmm. Like, and I could tell you on more than one occasion, signs have led me to make a decision mm-hmm. when I've been praying about something in, in very meaningful ways. Okay. So that was prophetic direction for you in, mm-hmm. in, in that particular matter. Mm-hmm. Okay. Celine, did you? I think my example is uh, that I thought it was just a word of knowledge that he gave me. So it's, I, it's, I don't know. Do you want me to? I don't. Maybe it was. Well, I mean, it, I don't know how as I said, I think about. I don't a, think a word of knowledge is prophetic. It, it, God mm-hmm. is giving us that that knowledge he's giving us that insight so that is prophetic i'll Um, I'll try then to quickly tell you when uh i'm 10 years ago allison park had a 24 7 365 day a year prayer um Mm -hmm. prayer prayer chapel prayer chain so i had my slot um it was a friday night at nine o'clock and i walked in and here were all these people that i didn't know that were there was pastor Chris there and he introduced me. They were all in a, they were getting ready to end the meeting and pray. He introduced me, said, Celine, you want to come pray with us? I said, sure. So these people were up from, a, from, they were from Ohio wanting to see how Allison Park ran their 24 seven prayer chapel. So we get in the, we get in this big circle and I don't know any of these people and we're praying and God says to me, I looked across the circle and there was a young man and he said, go lay your hands on his feet and pray for him. I said, Lord, they're going to think I'm nuts. Mm-hmm. But he, I, I think he might have said it again. And I knew it was him. I knew it, I knew it was the Lord. Mm-hmm. I just knew it was him. So when they were done praying, I said, Chris, I was, I'm told I have to lay my hands on. I got to get down and lay my hands on his feet, this boy's feet, and pray for him. And so I did that. And when I, and when I talked to the Lord, I cry. So get used to me crying. <laughs> <laughs> I just love him. But um, so when I got up and I just went, you know, step back, Chris, Pastor Chris said to me, Celine, you don't know this, but he just came from a, um, my mind just went blank. When you go out on a missions trip. Mission field, yeah. He just came back from a missions trip and he, he is getting ready to go out on another one. That is all that I knew 
I did what the Lord said, bless yeah. him abundantly. Yeah. yeah. I don't know any other feedback from any, all of those other people, because I think when God wasn't just working with me and in building me and whatever he was doing with him, but I think he was using, he was touching sure. everybody in that room. So yeah. and I, I think I that's a great that example that, too of God's giving direction. He gave you direction and through that direction and your obedience to it, he confirmed the direction he had for this, for this young man. So what, so that, would you explain how that was a pro prophetic word from God? Well, and, and or I think as you said, it, well, because God told you what to do and you did it. And by doing that, it, you confirmed the direction that this man had was going to take in going out. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Sure. Anybody else? Okay. All right. So prophecy, uh, delivering God's message as given by him. We've talked, we've talked about a foretelling, Telling the future, we've talked about declaring his purpose, um, but it also might be encouragement. Mm. Prophecy can be encouragement. Have, have who, anybody here ever been encouraged by a prophetic word? Mm. Elaine, Cambrick? It was, um, this happened more than once. One time I was on worship team and I was feeling real low about myself mm. and um kevin sharp wrote a letter and it was from god mm -hmm. and he even signed it from your father and it said that i was not his second choice mm. i wasn't chopped liver mm. that i was his first i remembered it i was his first choice and know that he loved me unconditionally and it was another time at women's prayer when Carl and Bonasark was asking me to take over. And you know, Carlin could pray. My Darnell would say, Carlin would pray 30 minutes in English and then 25 in tongues. Mm. And I said I wasn't, I couldn't pray like her. And God let me know that he didn't call me to be Carlin. Yeah, that's right. I forget who it was, but someone came and told me that you are not the caboose, you're the engine. And that Ooh. just really made me feel like I could do what God had called me to do and not compare myself to Curl. Okay. So. Prophetic encouragement. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Um, let me just give you a biblical example. And, uh, but if there are others that have personal examples, we can go with those too. But if you look as recounted in Romans 11 verses two through four, and then first Kings, uh, it's recounting what took place in first Kings 19, 10 and 14. Elijah was depressed and defeated thinking he was the only one left of the people oh, yeah. of God that was serving God in Israel. Yet God revealed to him that there were 7,000 who had not turned away from him to serve Baal. Now, if, if you look at the context, what's going on there just before that was when Elijah called down fire on all the prophets of Baal, and then he became depressed. Uh, and But God came along and encouraged him using a prophetic word, just like he did for you, Elaine, and uh, just as he still does uh, mm -hmm. today. Um, does anyone remember a couple of weeks ago when Judy Wilcox stood up and yep. by the spirit of here. God declared, get ready, get ready, get, here. remember that, get ready. What did it, wasn't that an encouraging word from God in that moment? Get mm -hmm. ready. And th that would just happen to a, a few weeks ago, but down through the years, God does this. He, and that's prophetic utterance that's prophecy where god declares he comes and he speaks to his people in a context and oftentimes it's an uplifting and encouraging kind of a thing 
Anybody else have an example that like this? Joyce, I'm looking right at you. I just know that I know that there are examples that you have. Yeah, I've had a couple of them. I mean, one was when Brother McKim was in the back of the service and he spoke out and said, I have a word for Joyce. And I wasn't there and, and Gail McQuiston wrote it down and he said that, um, I forget the verbatim, so I'll just paraphrase, that God sees me as a dancer, a ballerina dressed in a long flowing gown, always worshiping and praising and dancing before him. And, and so I met a friend mm -hmm. through Sue's ministry that I'm involved in, who is a prophetic painter. And when I gave her those words, she made me this beautiful picture hanging up above my fireplace of me dancing before God represented as the lion of the tribe of Judah with the crown on his head. I mean, it, it's just mm -hmm. beautiful. And, and then, of course, brother um, or prophet Kramer, you know, he told us, get ready, get ready, get ready. And we have three miracles coming. God said, you've taken care of my people. I'm going to take care of you. Get ready. You have three miracles coming. So, I mean, I'm looking forward to that. That gets me hope every day. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it, it's encouragement. The prophetic word can be encouraging. And uh, that could be an aspect of prophecy as well. Uh, so it, I, I hope you're seeing that prophecy is not always foretelling. It's not always telling mm -hmm. what's going to happen in the future. Oftentimes, it's declaring God's word right here and right now, uh, how it applies to a situation, his, his direction in a matter. It might be an encouragement. Um, uh, and we, we talked about McKee's Rocks. And, you know, I could say personally, it's far too many uh, for me to recount in my own personal life. You know, I, I, I could, if I sat down to, to list them all, um, it, it would just be, uh, be way too much for me to, uh, it, it would just take a lot of time. But the one, I'll tell you, the one I'm hanging on to right now is, and it was probably this, uh, this, I think I want to try to find if I could find. Yeah. It was from prophet Denny Kramer, Joyce, you mentioned him. Uh, and this was, and one of the things that we need to keep in mind Oftentimes, we, we live in an instant society, don't we? Yeah. It, it's funny. I was, uh, I was in the kitchen making a, a cup of coffee using our Keurig machine, you know, the instant coffee maker. Mm -hmm. And I'm standing there watching it make my cup of coffee, and I'm starting to get impatient. Where's my coffee? <laughs> you know, when I was a kid, it took a percolator on the stove 30 minutes to make a cup of coffee. Yeah. <laughs> and here I was unwilling to wait 30 seconds. And that mindset mm -hmm. is so invaded our thinking that mm -hmm. we lose sight of the fact that when God makes a prophetic declaration, there may be some time that's going to take place right. before he fulfills what he declared. It was in on October 9th of 2010 that I was at a, a pastor's meeting with prophet Denny Kramer and a, a piece of what he said to me was that your days of greatest spiritual progress begin now out with the old in with the new. And he said, the Lord would say miracles are going to explode a supernatural dimension that you never thought would happen to you. But the Lord says you thought about retirement, but I have declared refirement. I am refiring you. And then he goes on to say about the next decade, wonderful things that are going to happen. I'm telling you, I'm getting ready to retire from PWSA here in a couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm banking on refirement, baby. <laughs> I am absolutely, I am looking forward to God fulfilling this word that he has right. declared concerning me. And I believe that it's not just for me, it's for the church too that God is going to do this work. So prophecy can be an encouragement that we can cling to. Joyce, you say you're clinging to it. Dale, what do you have to add? Yeah, along with uh, the prophecy that we were given, um, could you turn it down? Um, if, if we let our intellect get in the way, uh, we would dismiss like some of the things that we, well, uh, the one thing that the prophet told us is said that we are the, the world and June cleaver. Joyce and I, in the natural, don't have any children. But then when you look at it, it's like uh, we, we're ministering at, at uh, Willow Lane. You don't think of those people at Willow Lane as children. 
they are, you know, in, in, in their senior years, but they are, you know, children of God nonetheless. And also, you know, the children that have come, have come you know, uh, he has orchestrated uh, in, in our lives as well. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, we've got to be careful that we don't dismiss with our intellect just because we don't grasp it, just because we don't understand it, we don't recognize it. If, if God has said it and it's an encouragement from him, we need to stand firm and trust him for it, you know. Um, so prophecy can be an encouragement as well. So it could be forthtelling. It could be declaring the future. It could be declaring his direction here and now. Prophecy can also be encouragement. Encouragement. Anybody else before we move on? Anything else? Okay. The last aspect of the, I think this is the last aspect that I have about prophecy. Prophecy can also be a rebuke. Now, rebuke from God. Hi, Ariel. Um, <laughs> a rebuke from God is typically reserved by God in his addressing of rebellion. Okay? God rebukes when there's rebellion. Um, and uh, somebody was pointing to uh, uh, Joyce, I think it was you that was talking about how the prophet went to David and confronted him about his failure. Was that you that was talking about that? Yeah. And it, it, if you look at when Saul, King Saul, uh, did not do what God told him to do, he received a prophetic rebuke. Mm -hmm. You know, he said, you could have been um, the one on whom God would have established this kingdom, but because of what you have done. And he received a rebuke for that. Um, uh, King Saul didn't wait for Samuel to perform the sacrifice. Instead, he chose to do it himself. In 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22, the prophet declared to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed than the fat of the lambs. And it, it's a prophetic rebuke. And these things did happen in the scripture, and they still happen today. Mm -hmm. um, if we look at Jesus rebuked the Pharisees mm -hmm. um, in, in Matthew 23, 27, he said, woe to you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites. You're like whitewashed tombs, which on the outside appear beautiful, but inside they're full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. Let me ask you this. What was God's purpose for, for making these declarations? Was he just looking to put people down and to crush mm -hmm. them under his feet? No. No. What was his purpose? Norma, you said um, no. I said no, but I don't know what his purpose was. He, he was probably making a, trying to correct them. Trying to correct them. Okay. Jamie, you said no. Why, why would you? To get them to repent of their sins and come back to him the way he ought. Yeah. yeah. When God's rebuke is in God's purposes are always restorative and redemptive. Oh, always. God's purposes are always restorative and redemptive. And um, when he brings a rebuke, it's not to crush. It's to, it's, it might be to break, that we might break and yield to him, but it's that we might turn around and repent and become the people he's created us to be but prophecy can be a rebuke sometimes um, now honestly i can't recall a, a rebuke that the church has received kathy um, do you ever recall a time where the lord rebuked us as a church no no I, and and it's not to say we've always had it straight but uh any, Joyce, you've been here long term. Do you ever recall? It, it's entirely possible that I might block such a thing. But um, do you ever, Joyce, you've been here? No, you don't recall either. So, and, and that should be an encouragement to us mm. because a, a rebuke comes when there's rebellion. And uh, I, I don't believe that as a church, and I, I'm pretty confident that as your pastor that I could say that 
I, I don't believe I've ever been in rebellion, and I don't believe the church at McKee's Rocks, is, McKee's Rocks Assembly of God has ever been in rebellion. So uh, the rebuke has not been there. Um, and, I have a question. Go ahead. Um, I know God has rebuked me several times, but I didn't feel like I was like in rebellion. You know what I mean? Like just stiff harmony. Because... Nice, nice segue, Elaine. Nice segue. <laughs> I the guy, Elaine. Nice segue. Because I, I think you're misreading chastening as rebuke. Okay. Now, when my sister passed, Margie, uh -huh. you told me God rebuked me because I was, she had passed in my arms outside. Okay. And I was screaming to the top of my lung. I mean, screaming that people could have heard me in the next neighborhood. And God said, I dare you act as though there is no hope. Well, that might have been a rebuke. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but again, you knew better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the minute he said it, I... You repented. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But he was but, giving you so much hope there. I didn't hear he was giving you the answer of hope. I wasn't, I wasn't looking for an answer. I was just crying hysterically because my sister had passed in my arms. And I was just crying, just screaming. And you were lashing out in anger. Probably, but I didn't realize. I was just crying because I knew she was gone. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And probably subconsciously thinking, why? But I, I didn't say it, but I, I, I just know I was screaming so loud that people did hear me. There were people did hear me. And God just, like you said, rebuked me. But I didn't feel like I was in rebellion. You know what I mean? Like I was. Yeah, I do. I do. And so, so maybe I was, maybe I'm too strong in saying that it rebukes, rebu just rebukes rebellion. Um, okay. When now I remember on the, when I was singing on the worship team several years ago, I got so concerned about how I sounded, making sure I didn't say the wrong word. If he said God, I said Lord, and to the point where he sat me down. Because but was, I, again, was that rebuke or was that just like a, a, a I think that a was disciplining or chastening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I felt that, yeah. Yeah. And he yeah, made me sit down yeah. for four months. And again, you know, we might be getting into semantics and splitting hairs here. Okay. You know, but uh, the, the point is that prophecy can sometimes be, uh, it can be direct. It could be a rebuke. It, it could be a chastening word. It might not always be encouraging uh, because... <laughs> Sometimes we don't need encouragement. We, what's yeah. that, Jamie? It could be a snap out. Snap of it. out of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and that's yeah. what I think that was. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. what I'm sitting here listening. That's what I'm thinking. Now that was a snap out of it. You know where she's going. Come on, Elaine. You're my girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it could be a little spanking. It could be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. Celine. What did he say, Elaine, to you? He said, "I dare you act as though there is no hope." How dare you act as, as, as if there is no hope? Right. And that, uh, yeah, I mean, because you know better. Right. That's just it. You knew better. Yeah. You knew there is hope. You know there is hope. And that was audibly. He yeah. said that audib I audibly. Mm. Yes. Yeah. You were stricken with grief. I, I see you acting that out just because you were so stricken with grief, not yeah, because really. you were in like defiance or rebellion of God. That's well, how come I said that, you know, I didn't feel like I was rebelling, but right. in the same token, I knew better. Right. That's just as if as a kid, your mother told you not to go in the refrigerator. And you did. And you did it anyhow, you mm -hmm. know, and now you're getting chastised about it because you knew better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and grief is more of a selfish thing. Exactly. We're, we're grieving because we love them and we're going to miss them. Exactly. We should be happy for them because they're not here anymore and they'll never suffer, cry, be in pain. Yep. And all that. And it's a very hard thing to do because sure. we are but selfish. But it is selfish because I was accused of being selfish from God when my mother died. Because <laughs> I was angry at him and I was fussing at him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I get it. <laughs> yeah, that's good. But it brought about the change, didn't it? 
it and it changed your perspective did. in it. Yes, it and, did. Uh, it has. And uh, so, okay. Well, it is actually seven thirty-two. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, this week through. It, it's it's been an enjoyable evening, I believe. Amen. And, um, <laughs> so uh, we will pick up. Uh, we check this out, folks. We didn't get off a of question eleven. No, we didn't. <laughs> That's why. Um, and we only in fact, covered one gift. If we only covered yeah, one right. gift, yeah. <laughs> Next week we're going to cover service, so we will come back to question eleven, uh, number two, which is talking about service. I think in uh, Elaine, in your translation, it said ministry, uh, because. Which actually, let's remember that. Let's come back and discuss it. Remind me next week, Elaine, that you're tra uh, actually, uh, I won't be here next week. I'll, I'll, Kathy and I are taking another week off next week. I know, I know, I know. We're taking another week off. How dare us? <laughs> but, uh, um, we're we're going to take a couple of days off next week, so I won't be here. Uh, so there will be somebody uh, else that will be teaching. And uh, Ron, I will connect you with them or them with you. And uh, you can work out the logistical details there. And uh, so, but in two weeks, we'll come back and we'll pick up here at question 11, number two, talking about service or ministry. Elaine, remind me about how your translation said ministry, because it's important that we recognize okay. that ministry is service. Yeah. I'll just drop that little seed there and let it go. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, so... Norma, can I get you to close this in prayer tonight, please? Heavenly Father, thank you for our discussion tonight. Thank you for the time of, of Bible study. And thank you and be with us the rest of this week until we meet again. And I pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Norma. Amen.